And now, fresh from her asteroid belt, Janet Kuypers. I credit the Kuiper Belt to being the home for Pluto, which is no longer a planet. So. Heck of a buckle. <laughs> Heck of a buckle. Uh, hi, I'm going to try to read more periodic tables for poems for you, and I haven't read them in a while, so I don't know how crazy and how much I'm going to stare at a book. Huh? This is from the edge. And I'm just, uh, and actually, I'm going to say, John, if you would like this, I'm going to throw a phone at you. Uh oh. Have a phone. Oh, take care. <laughs> he, he, was, he played baseball a lot. He was very good. So, and I throw for crap. He was the pitcher. I came to save my life. Um, but I've got three. And this one, because I've got them all in the 70s there, a series. This is Iridium. And it was on that whole thing about platinum and the other stuff we're talking about. So it seems to make sense. I was thinking about jewelry settings like platinum group metals so I could find just the right metal for the perfect setting. But wait, in the periodic table, right next to platinum, there's iridium. It's the second densest element there is, and it looks like silver white with like platinum, but it also has just a hint of gold hue in it. This sounds perfect. But wait a minute, and believe iridium has to be, you know, just too strong and hard and brittle so I couldn't actually work it for it because it just like break apart. But the one thing that's cool is that when Korea, uh, science tests, sorry, I'm going to start the sentence again. What is my problem with reading today? But the one thing I think is cool is that when scientists study the Creaceous uh, um, period and the Paleogenic period, that they boundary from 65 million years ago, they found a strong layer of iridium-rich clay. And no one knew for sure, but scientist Luis Alvarez and his team, they actually theorized that this massive asteroid collision, or maybe a comet impact, may have happened, and that may have driven the dinosaurs to extinction. And interstellar objects like, like that collided in the Earth, they were rich in iridium, leaving iridium in the clay, clay that separated these two uh, geologic periods. And it's just a theory, but it sounds kind of cool. And it's more and more reason to find iridium is fascinating, even if I can't even have it as jewelry. <laughs> But then I think about it. Now that I think about it, there might be something to this Alvarez theory, because right now there is what they call the Iridium Satellite Constellation, which literally is a set of satellites, satellites covering voice and data storage around the world for cell phones and for mobile electronic devices. So, yeah, if Iridium can relate to the change of the geologic historical periods, and if it can relate to satellites orbiting the Earth now for global communication, that's all the more reason to admire this dense, heavy element anywhere that we can find it. <laughs> I haven't read this one, so, and it's number 20 in the periodic table. It's called Calcium. Calcium. We'll see what I wrote about it. The media shoves it down your throats, how important it is for women to have calcium. Don't get osteoporosis, take calcium. Drink an extra glass of milk each day. It's healthy. You know, and as you know, I, I go and I take my supplements to ingest the USRDA for calcium, but I'm sure that those pills barely get absorbed. And as an infant at six months, I even rejected milk. I can't tolerate the taste. And I thought it was that it's just too small. And I thought, why is it smart to drink milk from another species as an adult when no other species around the world ever would do the same? But adults didn't suffer with osteoporosis before the 1700s. Did osteoporosis not exist till then? then what has changed in our society that porous bones are now a real concern for older people? <sighs> Just watched a documentary recently advocating a plant-based diet, and they talked about the global pro uh, the pr promotion of meat consumption to get enough protein. Now, I know how excess protein consumption can actually pull calcium away from your bones, but this documentary showed how China had lived for millennia without excess red meat or processed food, and now their dietary modern luxuries in China, along with new record values of heart, they now have re new record values, high, record high values for heart attacks. 
The youth are, who are interviewed on the streets in China are asked why they need to eat more pro meat, and they said, for protein. So when calcium usually comes from animals producing milk or cheese, how can vegans with a plant-based diet get enough calcium to save them from their bone decay? Now, calcium is chiefly found in sedimentary rocks. We have even used calcium in construction. Makes sense if you want to have strong bones. Calcium carbonate was used in concrete and mortar and limestone. Calcium is even in glass manufacturing. Then again, calcium arsenate is an insecticide, and calcium carbonate is used in acrylic torches. <laughs> and of course, calcium is in animal feed and vitamin pills. Now, 90% of all of our calcium is in our bones and our teeth, which we want to keep strong, of course. And calcium can stop osteoporosis or even rickets or difficulty with blood clotting. And here's the weird one. When you even get calcium in, you can even get calcium in egg shells. <laughs> Just grind them up for more calcium. <laughs> and calcium is also, is that not, yeah, get a load of that one. <laughs> and, and calcium is also used when making cheese. Well, calcium ions actually make the milk coagulate, which is cool for this pizzatarian that I seem to be. <laughs> If calcium is in cheese and in eggs with a plant-based diet, what, can it actually provide enough calcium? Well, I know vegetables do contain some calcium, and I know soy milk and other vegetable milks are fortified with calcium, but it's good to know that calcium sulfate has been used for millennia to coagulate the protein in tofu. <laughs> I know, I know, calcium and its ions are used in a ton of different things, but it's not nice, even as a vegetarian, to be able to get my vital calcium into these extended bones, into these extended bones of mine, too. <laughs> and now that I talked about calcium, I figure I should now talk about arsenic. This one's number 33. Dun, 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 this one's arsenic. Sorry. Poisonous arsenic is used in paints, dyes, metals, drugs, soaps, even animal feeding operations. We seem to hunt down ways to kill ourselves, don't we? <laughs> Dukes to kings were poisoned with arsenic. Impressionist painters painted the arsenic-laced the emerald green paints, which caused diabetes and blindness. Then I heard NASA announce that arsenic-based life forms were discovered on Earth. <coughs> but how could something that kills actually help produce life? Now, in order for this to exist, we need six elements. What? Carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur. Well, NASA scientists checked if any bacterium could ever live in an arsenic-flooded environment. So they went to Mono Lake, California, to see if anything could actually thrive there with its sulfur or salts and excess of arsenic. So NASA pulled phosphorus from the elemental sextet of life, and lo and behold, a mineral species used arsenic instead of phosphorus there. And at Mono Lake, Lake, it thrived there quite nicely. So I suppose NASA found even more bizarre life in California than we were actually used to. <laughs> Darwinism may show that species can adapt and survive because who knows, arsenic in the place of phosphorus on Earth may date back to the origin of life, where it may have been actually occurred in arsenic risk rich hydrothermal vents. I don't know if we want to create arsenic life forms here on Earth, but knowing that this is possible increases the possibility and the probability of finding life elsewhere in the universe. And it's nice to know that we're looking at all possibilities when looking for what is ultimately good to find life in this universe. Person.